Christos Anesti, Alitos Anesti, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Happy Easter, everybody. I'm Father Jason, priest here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church. If you are visiting with us this morning, we are so blessed and honored to have the gifts that you are praying with us. I know that we have many as we're blessed not just to celebrate Easter Sunday liturgy, but to have baptisms as well. As Nate and his son Judah will be baptized shortly um, after the sermon this morning. Uh, so we're grateful for all the family and friends who gather around Nate and Judah to surround you with love and support. Uh, because we're having a baptism, you should have picked up an order of worship at the entrance that has their names on it. This is the order of worship we'll use at the very beginning of the Mass this morning. And then we're going we're gonna to resume using it right after the homily for the baptism. Once the baptism is completed, then we'll go back to the regular Easter orders of worship that you'll find in your pew racks. These will guide you through the rest of the liturgy that is to follow. All of the hymns that we'll be singing today, or the music that we'll be singing that is not in the order of worship, can be found in your blue hymnals, which are in your pew racks. Our opening hymn is hymn number 207, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please rise as you are able. <laughs> One Lord, one faith, one baptism. 
one God and the Father of all. The Lord be with you and also with you. On this Easter morning, let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as Amelie comes forward to proclaim the Lord.
Christ and me to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Our Alleluia during the Easter season is simple. It's often used at Masses with the deaf community, so we'll be signing if you're comfortable as we sing along. It's easy to pick up and we can make some Easter noise with the promises, so please rock. Ave, 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 Luya. Father, 
But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. so claimed by death 
somehow found a new space thanks to God's work that was created and opened up for Alan to explore again and anew, the space of gardening. And it was a beautiful Easter space for Alan to explore, one that kept him connected to his beloved late wife, Rose, and one that reconnected him to a community of faith. This morning we heard the gospel story of Easter as told by John. And it's full of, of brilliant little details. But they all celebrate God's ability to enter into space that once was so entirely claimed, in this case by death, and there create new space for Easter exploration. We see that gift offered to Simon Peter and the beloved disciple, who begin by childishly racing one another to the tomb, not quite sure if they believe Mary, expecting to find the space claimed entirely by death. And when they get there, they find that there's been new space. Death isn't there. And according to the text, they had to go in and explore that new Easter space before coming to Easter faith. And then there was Mary Magdalene, caught up in grief, not able to initially go in. Not even the sight of angels could, could turn her heart. Or Jesus, whom she mistook as the gardener, thinking back dearly to, to good old Alan. But once she heard Jesus speak her name tenderly, Mary, and she recognized her teacher in front of her, what did she try to do? She tried to hold on to him, to claim the space for herself. And what did Jesus do? He slipped from her grasp. Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Jesus stepping back, creating Easter space for Mary to explore, telling her, go, tell the brothers, begin exploring this new space that I have just made, in a space once claimed entirely by death. Begin exploring this space now. And that's how Mary's journey started, and those of the early disciples. And in truth, that's been the journey of the church ever since. Continuing to discover God, carving out, creating new space that once seemed so claimed by life or death, and entering into it and growing wonderfully in the process. And that gift of Easter is unfolding all throughout life today. It's unfolding in Poland with the horror in the war in Ukraine. It's been interesting to learn Poland has a, a very generous refugee program. That's why they've invited in over 2.5 million Ukrainian refugees, far more than any other nation welcoming in refugees from war. But what's really remarkable is how young adults in Poland are stepping informally coordinating through their smartphones to meet Ukrainian refugee families at the border and absorb them into the support of Poland. And a gift that they are as they're, they're able to stand there and meet these refugees who, who were living in a space once entirely claimed by terror and war. And through the compassion of these young adults connecting through their phones and meeting them at the border, suddenly new space is opened up, space that is now safe at some level, space that's, that's able to help these families connect with things that you and I take for granted, basic things like getting their kids back into school or getting medicines that they rely on every day. The gift of Easter in a powerful way. I got to be an instrument of that gift last week thanks to your generosity. If you're not familiar with the Episcopal tradition, us priests, we have what's called a discretionary fund. It's a small fund that people donate to, and it allows me to help people who are in need. And in honesty, I really get few requests here at St. Luke's. Last Tuesday, I was in the office, and the phone rang, and it was a, a family agency here in Milwaukee. And they were calling to ask if I could help out. They had a mother and a one-year-old son. The mother was getting out of a, an abusive relationship. The agency had helped her find work and an apartment. She had a car, but she didn't have a car seat. And when you're starting from ground zero, those aren't a cheap thing. The car seat that the agency informed me of was 
around $200. And they said she really needs this for her son. It's a seat that he can grow into over the years so she can get him to and from daycare and she can get to and from work. And I was grateful to be able to go on Amazon and order the seat and have it shipped to the agency. It's supposed to arrive tomorrow, tomorrow and they'll deliver it to this mother. It might seem like just a car seat, but along with the support this agency is offering, it's another gift of Easter. For this young mother who was living in space claimed by violence and hurt and heartache, and now there's, there's Easter space created in the midst of that all, and I hope and pray that she and her beloved one-year-old son are able to grow wonderfully and beautifully as they move into that new space. And we're going to experience that gift in a few moments when you, Nate, and your son Judah come forward to be baptized. As an adult, Nate, you come to this font in a unique situation, clearly not unchurched, a part of a, a rich and beautiful tradition within Christianity that you were immersed in, one that maybe didn't baptize with water, but certainly had the Holy Spirit. And along the way, something stirred and you began to make a journey exploring new space in your life. I can resonate with that a bit, having left the Roman Catholic Church. And I know the many layers of emotion and thought and maturity and struggle that go into that kind of journey. Baptism as a sacrament has many layers of meaning. One of them is the meaning that through the waters we become a new creation. And that's really not meant to be a once and done experience for us as people of faith. What baptism reveals is that a life of faith is a life of continually stepping into new space that God carves out for us. And as we explore it, we hear that invitation to be made new again and again. I can speak for myself, and I know I can speak for the people of St. Luke's to say that we are so incredibly grateful that you, Danielle, Nate, and Judah are willing to explore some new space with us here at St. Luke's. We're richer and blessed for it. But that seems to be the pattern of coming to Easter faith. We have to be willing to step into space that once seems so claimed by life or death, only to find out that it's not claimed by it. Was. Again, going back to the gospel, it wasn't enough for Peter to believe on the word of Mary. He had to go into the tomb and explore it for himself, the new space that God had created. Otherwise, he never would have really believed. Which is to say that the path to Easter faith often begins in ways that don't really look a whole lot like faith at first glance. Like when you start to learn how to garden from church ladies, or when you're standing at the edge of a diving board, or when you throw off the security blanket of your life, or dare to step out on a new venture, or take a long, risky, honest look at yourself. Such may not seem like moments of faith at first glance, but thanks to Easter, those are often our first wobbly steps into the new space of empty tombs that echo with Alleluia. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite the congregation to remain seated. I'm going to invite Nate, Danielle, Judah, and Judah's godparents, Justin and Courtney, to come up and stand up here facing the congregation. I'd also direct your attention back to our baptism order this morning.
we'll start with Danielle presenting Nate. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Nathan Joseph Urban to receive the sacrament of baptism. Nathan, do you desire to be baptized? I do. Now I invite all of the grown-ups up here to present Judah. We present Judah Daniel Urban to receive the sacrament of Parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that Judah is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Hello, God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Judah grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world? which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and to obey him as your Lord? And now I ask all of you who have witnessed these vows, will you who witnessed these vows do all in your power to support Nate and Judah in their lives in Christ? We will. Then let us join with Nate, Judah, and their family who are committing them and their lives to Jesus Christ and renew our baptismal covenant. And so I ask you, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Holy Spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek to serve Christ in all persons? Loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. And let us now pray for Nathan and Judah, who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. 
Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. If there are any littles in the parish who would like to get a closer look, you can come up as we are about to baptize and able to do that. You're welcome to stand and get pictures as well or move around. Judah, Daniel, Urban, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon Nathan and Judah, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Time for the sacred prism. My favorite. Also, you can smell it every time you got to it. Nathan, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Judah, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ is coming forever. Amen.
the light of Christ. Let us welcome the newly baptized as we pray together. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. It is now my great joy and honor and privilege to welcome, introduce you to the newest Christians in the world and the members of the church, Nathan and Judah. Hear our prayers, risen Lord, and answer them according to your will, because we always make them in faith, in your holy and life-giving name. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share that, however, with us. Peace be with you. Thank you. 
may be seated for just a brief instruction for communion. This is a celebration of Holy Communion in the Episcopal Church. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive. Uh, I'll be standing off to the right of the font with the consecrated bread. I do have gluten-free hosts, by the way, so if you request one of those, please let me know when you come forward. Uh, if you would like to receive consecrated wine, um, we have a wonderful garden ministry here at St. Luke's, and we compost, so we have compostable cups. But after receiving the bread from me, you can go to your right, take a compostable cup. Parish member Scott will be here with a silver cruet of wine. to pour a little into your cup, say the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. You can consume, and there's a little basket right here that you can set your used cup in. Uh, I think that's it. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us offering and sacrifice to God. Please rise as we join in our, our offertory hymn, hymn number 180, found in the blue hymn. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true pastor who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim. Where with Mary Magdalene, Luke, and all your saints, 
we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the peace. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food and the sacrament of body and blood. Set us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage for the love and serve you. Time for blessings. Is there anybody celebrating a birthday this week of Easter who would like a blessing? Yeah. Hank? Or Leona? Hank? Come on, let's see here. Um, maybe come off to the side here so people can see you sort of. Or let's see if I can move the font a little bit and not spill too much. So we can get a good look at you. Come on up on the step there. Hank, how old are you going to be? Three? That's awesome. Let's play, pray a prayer of blessing over Hank. Watch over your child, Hank, O oh Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may go. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he ever falls. And in his heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, dwell all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy third birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, we gave him a clap. Sweet. Any wedding anniversaries this week? Anybody carrying a weight physically or emotionally or mentally or spiritually would like to celebrate the sacrament of anointing? Yes. Yeah. All right. Quick announcements for us as Christian people. This is just the beginning of a very long season of Easter that runs through the Feast of Pentecost, which I think is in June this year. Um, so we need a lot of energy to make it through the season, and we, we're beginning right. There's lots of sugar available at the church, especially for the littles. Outside, all around church, if you go out the front doors to the right or left, there are eggs everywhere. There's little bags you'll be given. You can put your candy in the bags, and um, maybe we'll recollect the eggs. I don't know how that's working out. I'm the last to know those sorts of things in the church. Uh, but everybody's welcome, children, young and old, to take part in the egg hunt. We also have a wonderful festive coffee hour downstairs to celebrate the gift of Nate and Judah and their baptisms today. Uh, and the last announcement is I've been trying to practice mindfulness a little more in my life, and I did really well at church today because I was so into the moment of your baptism that I forgot to sprinkle you all with Easter water, so you're getting it when I leave. So just get, just get ready for that. I got to get a bowl out of here. Now, I would invite you to rise for your blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 179 in the book of 179.
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank <laughs> you.